Please be seated. It's really easy at times to misperceive things this morning at 8 o'clock. As I was doing the homily, I began to see this look of awe and wonder on people's faces. And I thought, it wasn't that good, but <laughs> wow, you know, I, I must have hit something here. So during coffee hour, I found out that during my homily, a hang glider When, uh, when I was a child, uh, as you know, my father was pastor of many Methodist churches, and usually there were anywhere from two to six churches that he was responsible for. They were rural churches, and it was the practice in those communities that, one, we didn't observe Advent. We didn't know what that was, so we didn't observe it. But then around the issue of Christmas, uh, each of the churches competed to see when they could do their pageant the earliest. Wanted to get it over and done with. And there was no practice during those times of having worship on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day. Unless Christmas Eve or Christmas Day fell on Sunday. So it became our practice as early as I can remember that on Christmas Eve morning, my father was not having to do services either day, so we would get up, we would load up our car, and we would head to their hometown. In the early years, both sets of my grandparents were alive. And so on Christmas Eve, we would go to my, my maternal grandparents' home. And we would get settled in, and then that evening, that side of the family would come together and have Christmas together. Then the next morning, we would get up, and about mid-morning on Christmas Day, we would head across town. It was a small little town, so it didn't take that long. But we'd head, head across town to my paternal grandparents, and there we would have Christmas. Now, that was a big event. My dad, there were 13 kids in his family, so that could be a pretty large gathering by the time you had grandkids and great-grandkids, even, even if one of the brothers or sisters didn't show up that year. And we would have this big meal, and then by the it, it would take half the afternoon just to get your food and eat. Uh, with that number of folks. And then later in the day, we would go back over, and we always stayed at my maternal grandparents'. Well, the thing that happened is that because of this time schedule, Santa, he couldn't rightly show up at my grandparents', so Santa would visit me on the eve of Christmas Eve. So Christmas Eve morning, I would get up and I would see what Santa had brought me the previous night. And I would play with it. And I, if, I could take some of those things with me in the car and, and I could uh, taunt my cousins with what Santa had brought me. I thought I was just doing Santa a favor and letting him get one over before the, the big rush. But it was, I was the envy of all of my friends and enemies because I was able to have Santa visit me early. That whole cycle of things was our family tradition. It was our family tradition that we would get together and go to the home city for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day 
It was our tradition that we did one meal on Christmas Eve, another on Christmas Day, and it was a tradition that we did them in that order. And it was our family tradition that I, I got an early visit from Santa. You and I have various traditions, don't we? I'm sure you probably have traditions related to your family. Maybe in your family you get together at certain times of the year, Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or Fourth of July or, or someone's birthday or everyone's birthday. You come together for a meal or you visit maybe now by Skype or whatever it is, you have your family and personal traditions. Our gospel today is about traditions. The Pharisees and the scribes approach Jesus and they say to him, you say that you are the Messiah and that your, your disciples are Jews, yet they do not follow the traditions of the elders. Now the Pharisees and the scribes and to some degree the Sadducees are really important people. Uh, Judaism, or, or, or the, the religion of the Jews, had, had fallen apart. That whole culture had, had gone downhill because of their uh, repeated times of captivity. All the various things, and the Pharisees and folks began to pull them back together by focusing on law and tradition. And that's what was holding them together at this time. And their question is a fair question of Jesus. If they're truly Jews, why are they not following the tradition of the elders? If you're Episcopalian, why are you not acting like one? Whatever that may mean. Why do you not follow those traditions? You and I have those kinds of traditions. You and I have them within our families, within our culture. There are times that we do certain things. But oftentimes we come to understand that those traditions have limitations as well. One of the things that happened for us was when my son was born. I was by this time a priest. And I had been an Episcopalian for a few years, and I was now really invested in those Christmas Eve services and those Christmas Day services. We also made the conscious decision that at every holiday when we had previously been expected to go visit our families, we decided we were not going to do that anymore. There were certain ones that we would but others that we would not. We did not have Santa present on the eve of Christmas Eve. We came to believe and to practice a different and new tradition and let that one go. It was important for us to be able to do that. We in the church have our traditions. A good part of what we do when we stand behind the altar, those, those crazy and strange sorts of, of things that we do back there, a lot of that is by tradition. Yet even in the church we find times that our need is to change that tradition. Because tradition in and of itself can become, as many other things, an idol. It, it, tradition and its idolization is responsible for that great phrase that is the mandate of most congregations. We've never done it that way before. And we don't do it that way because of tradition. But sometimes we need to change those. So we claim then that tradition does not be, be an idol for us and that change can be important, but we have to be careful because change can then become an idol in itself, can't it? 
We begin to change for change's sake only. And we begin to let go of these various traditions, some of which may be important to us in the continuation of our, our belief and faith in God. So we change and we don't change. I, uh, I first had my most intense encounter with the Episcopal Church in the fall of 1979. That's important. It's important because about two months before my first Sunday in that particular congregation as an intern, General Convention had approved what we now refer to, then referred to, as the new prayer book. If you want to understand the role of tradition in the church, understand what it's like to change a prayer book. If you want to really understand what tradition is like in the church, understand that we still call it the new prayer book. <laughs> but Jesus says to the Pharisees and the scribes, listen, you're barking up the wrong tree. It's not that what you're saying is bad. It's not that what you're talking about is necessarily the wrong thing. Rather, understand that by you changing this doesn't change what happens inside the person. It do they're doing this. They're not washing their hands in this ceremonial manner. doesn't change what's in their heart. And what's in their heart is what's important. And Jesus says it has to do with God's commandment. Ah, there we are. There we are. For what is the commandment that Jesus continually reminds us? It is to love God and to love our neighbor. He's not throwing out traditions. He's not saying don't change traditions, change traditions. He's saying that what's most important is the love in your heart for God and for each other and how you live this out. So you and I, we will hold intention this thing of holding and keeping traditions and changing traditions. But that which guides us and which leads us in our lives is not the maintenance or eradication of tradition, but how we live out our love of God and of each other. Amen.